Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week, we're just ripping right into it. The ecosystem is still going strong, even as what feels almost like a pre-0.14 release slowdown is happening. The fourth unofficial Bevy meetup was live streamed on YouTube on May 24th and included three talks. The first was from Francois, who gave a talk about Bevy's and potentially your own CI system titled Catching Rendering Regressions on All Platforms. The talk culminated in a call to test your own project's targets, shaders, UI positioning, and more. In talk number two, Lorenz gave a talk about building your own render pipelines titled Hooking into the Bevy Rendering Pipeline. It came with this wonderful GitHub repo with working code. In the third slot, Yoss gave a talk about the project they had featured in the Bevy 0.12 release notes titled Recreating Townscaper Using Rust and Bevy. The talk covered a lot of what you would expect from a Townscaper-influenced topic, including procedural generation and more. A demo of the project is live. The link to this is on the website, and you can see it right here. I guess I'll build a windmill here. <laughs> Getting into the PRs, Reflection in Bevy is used for a variety of applications. For example, as you can see here, Bevy Inspector eGUI uses a custom macro to power inspector options. Bevy could support this in its reflection capabilities, and this PR does exactly that, enabling support for custom attributes. This reflected information is stored in the type info and can be retrieved for use in editor and other code applications. In 13.451, DIR3 and DIR2 got support for slurp, or spherical linear interpolation. This corresponds to interpolating between two directions at a constant angular velocity. And we've got a couple updates for shapes this week. Sampling was first introduced a couple months ago, in 12.484. This created the shape sample trait, which powers the uniform point sampling on Bevy Mathis shapes. This lets you calculate randomized points contained by the shape's interior or on the surface boundary, using functions like sample interior or sample boundary. And this week in 13.315, shape sample got an implementation for sampling many points in a distribution instead of just one. This sampling relies on RAND's distributions and provides iterators. Following on to that, the analysts and the tetrahedron both got their sampling implementations. If you're not already aware, primitives in Bevy Math usually get a primitive implementation, and then additional functionality is sort of stacked on top in successive PRs. This prevents the PRs from being monolithic and hard to review, and it means things like the initial primitive implementation, getting a mesh from that implementation, or sampling can come in multiple PRs. Speaking of, that's exactly what happened this week for tetrahedron, which also got its meshing implementation. And similarly, the conical frustum also got meshing. That's this shape right in here, which by default is a cone with a height of one, a radius of 0.5, and truncated at half height. Speaking of shapes, we also got some new primitives in arc 2D, circular sector, and circular segment. And finally, for the overview, Alice's merge train is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. She does a great job on these threads, so if you're interested in getting deeper into Bevy, and the PRs that are going into Bevy, this is a great thread to check out. Our first showcase this week is Bob and Bear. Bob and Bear is a Bevy powered machine embroidery file editor, primarily targeting the web. There's a lot planned for the future of the project, and it seems like there's a lot of work still to be done. We've also got another Quartz Jam. Quartz is a visual programming and DSP, or digital signal processing playground. This demo is called Grace, and as usual, includes audio. So click through to the YouTube video if you're interested in hearing and seeing more of this. And this is an isometric game block out. This demo mimics the Hades one start menu using regular Bevy UI and starting the game shows 3D rendered eight directional character animations that were rendered out of Blender on top of an isometric level built with tiled and integrated with Bevy ECS tile map. Interaction in the world happens via sensors, colliders and ray casting using Bevy XPBD 2D and the world and character art are blockouts and will be replaced in the future. Next up, we've got this Toon Water Shader. This Toon Water Shader was based on a Unity Tutorials implementation and is available on GitHub under DGen Toon Water. Next up, to build a home built out a personality system. In their own words, the first version of the personality system of to build a home based on the big five model of personality. Characters have five personality traits subdivided in 30 subtraits that define their mood, decisions, wants, needs, etc. The text on the screenshot is generated dynamically based on the sub-traits of the character. Our next showcase is showcasing rock destruction. These rocks are being created as volumetric shapes divided into a Voronoi's influenced grid and remeshed using a surface nets algorithm. The application of this is for a realistic mining game. This one is really, really, really cool. 
Bevy Punk is a recreation of Cyberpunk UI in Bevy using Bevy Lunex, a path-based retained layout engine. This demo makes use of a brand new crate called Kinetoscope, which is responsible for loading and playing the GIFs that you can see ahead of the actual start menu UI. The start menu UI, of course, looks fantastic, and I highly suggest you start checking this out. And from Cyberpunk to console, this console-based puzzle platformer expects you to interact with the world via a command line interface. That's quite Cyberpunk if you ask me. Our next demo integrates Bevy and Rye to render web views inside of Bevy apps. This is an interesting approach that has actually been prototyped a few times going back at least six months since Tori and Rye gained the ability to render multiple windows in one and interact via has window handle, which is a trait. Tori has an official example of this kind of approach and so does Rye, which I've left linked to on the website. This infinitely scalable candy is an SDF fragment shader experiment. The code is fairly compact and more of it is included in the Discord thread. And of course, we've got exciting meshlets news. This is a GLTF file to meshlet mesh processing example. Converting GLTF files, such as those exported from Blender, to bevy meshlet meshes can make it easier to use the experimental meshlets feature. This demo is a demonstration of an early version of this processing work. And of course, this showcase is related to a currently open PR, meshlet GLTF processor, 13431. Bevy Reactor's Reflective Property Inspector widget now uses the new Bevy Reflect Custom Attributes feature that we talked about in the overview to specify the min and max value for numeric fields, as well as the number of decimal digits shown and the step size. This enables building a slider widget for editing F32 fields, and a new Spinbox widget can be used to edit VEC3 fields. Spinboxes are used when the numeric field has no min or max constraint, or when there isn't enough space to put a slider. The code for this one is definitely worth checking out and it's included in the Discord thread, so go click on that. This is Starfell. Starfell is a game where you build your own community on a tiny planet. You will be able to construct houses, collect resources, interact with NPCs, and take on enemies and big bosses. This update redesigns the pine trees, improves various aspects of foliage, and invests in some infrastructure and refactoring. The movement demo that you can see here is a little bit older, but is still available on YouTube. This work in progress project is about 1000 lines of Rust and WGSL that shows us some very cool GPU driven particle trails. And 3D pixel art is pretty popular. 3D pixel art in this case is generated by using a post process shader to draw outlines and rendering at a low resolution and then scaling up. This person's first steps with Bevy included making their own console implementation with fuzzy search. And finally, we've got this design for Gen Design Minecraft 2024 a Minecraft simulation in Bevy. This demo is simulating a Minecraft settlement in Bevy and then rendering it in Minecraft for the Gen Design MC 2024. As the simulation runs, each tick's changes get written to MBT, which is a file format, and at the end, a data pack is generated that reads the MBT and replays it inside of your Minecraft world. That's it for showcases. Let's get into the crates this week. Bevy Web Keep Alive is a collection of plugins that aim to deal with the fact that web pages can stop running your Bevy app if the player backgrounds the game. It's got a few different plugins and it saw its 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3 releases this week. Up next is Pyre State 0 0.1. While Bevy states are getting computed states and substates in Bevy 0 0.14, you can still use any alternative state implementation you'd like, like this crate, Pyre State, which has its own take on state management, including its own take on computed and substates. And it also works with Bevy 0 0.13. Bevy Histrion Packer v0.3 got its release this week. Bevy Histrion Packer is a Bevy plugin that enables efficiently packing all your game assets, such as textures, audio files, and other resources into a common pack-like file format. 0 0.3 updates the .hpack file format to support multiple compression algorithms, including deflate, gzip, zlib, and brotly. And finally, we've got one entry for devlogs this week, Sickle UI theming. This devlog shows off progress on Sickle UI's theme support. And that is it for this week. If you want to contribute, we've got all of the pull requests that were merged this week listed on the site, as well as the pull requests that were opened and need some review. If you're looking to dive a little bit deeper, we've also got the issues that were opened this week, which you may be able to help with. As always, have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next one.